Okay, so we have everything we need to start talking about theories with interactions between particles. Um, so, long story short, to make a theory that in involves interactions between particles, you take your free, uh, free theory Lagrangian, and you add terms that are higher order to some higher order power in the fields. And maybe that's not obvious that it leads to interactions between particles, but when we do examples, that'll become more clear. And the way we're actually going to calculate things is we're going to assume that these interacting terms are small. And you can follow through David Tong's arguments. Basically, the key thing to know is we're only going to be worrying about terms that are like phi, in the case of the real scalar field, phi cubed and maybe phi to the four, because the higher order terms will be much smaller at low energies. And so that's helpful. And so beyond that, all we need to know is, so we're going to treat this basically just like how we did in uh, ordinary quantum mechanics, where we have our Hamiltonian, there's a free part and a pertur perturbation part, in this case, a, an interacting part. And basically, so what we're going to be doing is, given some initial state and some, um, and this operator, our interacting term, uh, we can find what this interaction term or how it transforms our initial state into a final state. And so this initial state could be some, you know, it'll be our one particle or two particle, however many particle states. And similarly, the final state could be some linear combination of those. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've just written this here because there's kind of an analogy. So in ordinary quantum mechanics, given some initial state, you apply this time evolution operator, and that will give you uh, the final state, or the time evolved state in this case. Here, we're given some initial state. We apply this operator, which looks very much the same as um, an ordinary quantum mechanics, but there is a key difference in that we have this time ordering operator here. And um, so to actually evaluate this, we can make use of the fact, we haven't made use of the fact yet that we're going to say that uh, HI is small. It's a perturbation term. So if it is, then we can Taylor expand this operator the usual way and get something like this. And so these are what we're going to be using to actually do calculations. These are the things we need to calculate uh, so the next example basically will involve calculating with this term. And so basically just given some initial state, if we calculate this thing uh, applied to that state, that will give us our uh, final state. And um, basically that final state will involve some linear combination of singular um, multi-particle states, and uh, those could be different from the number of particles in the initial state. So I, hope, I, I don't know if I'm doing a tremendously good job of explaining that, but it'll become more clearly, more more clear in the, uh, in the example that follows. Next video. Uh, and then one small thing, uh, this time ordering operator here. So in this Taylor expansion, um, you only have you only have eight, so in this term, you only have hi evaluated at t prime. So time ordering is not actually a concern for this term because you're always evaluating the operators at a single time. So you never have to time order things. For this term, you have this operator evaluated at t prime, this one evaluated at t prime prime. And the way he writes out you know, takes care of the time ordering is, well, this integral over dt prime prime only goes up to t prime. So t prime prime is always, um, 
earlier, you know, less than t prime, so it's time ordered in that way. But in practice, that's not actually how you calculate uh, work with this term. Um, so that'll we'll have to do more with this term uh, when we get to it. And that'll be the video after next. But the next video will just be involving this term. So we don't have to worry about time ordering for that.